Hey guys, welcome back to another video. It is Clay. Today I want to talk about logical fallacies. Logical fallacies are something that are basically littering our entire world. They're interwoven into all forms of human communication. You know, things like politics, sales, religion, anytime where you have somebody that's trying to convince a group of people of something, these fallacies seem to pop up. So a logical fallacy is a flaw in a deductive argument that basically renders an argument invalid. So a deductive argument is just a fancy word for a logical argument. It's any time you have a premise that then leads to a conclusion. For example, it is raining outside, therefore there must be some kind of rain cloud out there. So if you flip that argument around or almost take the opposite of that argument, it becomes a logical fallacy. If you said it is not raining outside, therefore there are no rain clouds in the sky. That would be an invalid argument, an example of a logical fallacy. But the point of the matter is, in order to have rain, you need a rain cloud. But just because you have a rain cloud doesn't necessarily mean there is rain. So there are literally hundreds of logical fallacies out there, sort of all the way from minorly irritating to like hugely frustrating. And if you're the type of person who kind of values logic, you, you might be annoyed by a lot of these things even though you don't really know the names for them. So I'm going to jump into my favorite fallacies today. So the first logical fallacy I'm going to mention is the ad hominem. It's basically when a person attacks another person's character instead of responding to their argument. The point of the matter is, it's a deflection. Instead of addressing the argument or the thing they are trying to say, you are instead focusing on this essentially irrelevant information that has nothing to do with the argument itself. Right now today as a candidate, he supports federal taxpayer funding for Planned Parenthood. I disagree with him on that. That's a matter you of principle and I'll, and I'll tell you- You are the single biggest liar. You probably are worse than Jeb Bush. You are the single biggest liar. Nasty guy. Now I know why he doesn't have one endorsement from any right. of his colleagues. All right, right. John, I, I get to respond. Senator pick from the buffet there. He's a yeah. nasty guy. So the next fallacy I want to talk about is the appeal to authority. And the basic idea is this. If somebody is making some kind of a claim and you question them about it, ask for some kind of proof or their reasons about why they're making this claim, and they reply with an appeal to authority or say something like, you know, this person who is an expert said so. The key to a true appeal to authority fallacy is the supposed expert has to be, you know, less than credible. So an example of this might be if somebody tells you not to talk on your cell phone because you might get a brain tumor. And when you ask them how they know that, they might say, well, my brother's a doctor and he said so. And then when you investigate, you know, where, where'd your brother go to med school? Oh, it turns out he has a degree in philosophy and although he is technically a doctor, he's not a medical doctor and therefore he has no credibility on this issue. So the next fallacy I want to talk about is the straw figure fallacy. This is also called the straw man fallacy, but some people are trying to make it more politically correct and call it straw figure because it can be men or women. So the straw figure fallacy is essentially a pandemic in our world and it is basically it is easier to attack a weakened version of somebody's argument than to attack the real version of that argument. So let's say I'm saying something that's quite nuanced and technical. Somebody could dumb that down into some really dumb statement and then attack that. Right, so you've, you're saying you've done your research and women are unhappy dominating men. I didn't say they were unhappy dominating. But you're saying that makes them unhappy, by and large. I'm saying that that, no, I'm not saying that. I'm, I, and I actually haven't said that. Depends so you don't believe it. in equal pay? <laughs> no, I'm not saying that at all. You basically saying women need to just accept they're never going to make it on equal terms. No, I didn't if say that. If I was that. a young woman that watching that, I would go, emotion. you're saying that women aren't intelligent enough to run these top companies? No, I didn't say that at all. You were saying that intelligence and conscientiousness traits. by implication are not female traits. No, oh, no. I mean, that's very dangerous that. territory. I'm not saying that at all. Are women less There's... intelligent than men? No, large? no, they're not. The false dilemma fallacy. This one boils down an argument into one of two camps, one of two conclusions, and they are usually opposites. The reason why it is a fallacy is because there are often many shades of gray in between. So it would be like me saying, you must be a Democrat or Republican. You must be black or white. When in reality, you know, there's many shades in between those two things. What choices are we gonna make to reach that goal? Either we ask the wealthiest Americans to pay their fair share in taxes, or we're gonna have to ask 
seniors to pay more for Medicare. The slippery slope fallacy. This one assumes that a step in a certain direction, a small step, will eventually lead to like a chain reaction of further events into some kind of exaggerated outcome. When you're young, your parents might have thrown this one at you quite a bit. It's like, well, don't do that. Otherwise, you know, you're going to end up a drug addict on the street kind of thing. When in reality, you know, one little step in a certain direction doesn't necessarily mean that you will continue down that path. Okay, Stephen Baldwin, hi. You're against legalizing hey, marijuana. Why? You know, obviously, Joy, there's a lot of common sense that needs to be uh, included in this conversation. It's a very simple reality. Marijuana leads to doing worse things. That's just a fact. I don't care what anybody says, what the debate is. When you smoke marijuana at a young age, it'll usually lead to alcohol abuse and harder drugs. So right there, I mean, that's one reason why uh, it should not be legalized. The circular argument fallacy. This one is when somebody's argument starts with what they're trying to prove in the end. Sort of like, the Bible is true because it says it's true. Or something like, you must obey the law because it is illegal to break the law. Essentially, the start and the end of the argument are the same thing, and it's like this endless circle of reasoning. You can never really escape the loop. So for you, why do you put your faith in believing <laughs> that one book? Well, let's just start off with, with the, the fact that the Bible is true. Uh, all the others are not true. That's the biggest key. God is true. Uh, and his word that comes from him is also true. Yeah, that, that's kind of an easy way to answer that question. How do we know the Bible's true? By virtue of it coming from God who is the truth. The alphabet soup fallacy. So this one is kind of funny to see. It's when somebody assumes that the more big words, acronyms, abbreviations, or kind of like shop talk they use, the more knowledgeable they must be on the topic. It's sort of like you're not allowed to be really knowledgeable and smart about something unless you use all these big words. So you see this a lot in like academic circles. It kind of irritates me in a way because I'm of the belief that if you really know a topic well, you should be able to explain it to a child. And if you can only explain it to other academics, then really, do you really know your stuff? So alphabet soup fallacy is kind of one of my personal pet peeves. What, what do you mean by God? Part of the conception of God that underlies the Western ethos is the notion that whatever God is is expressed in tr the truthful speech that rectifies pathological hierarchies. And that isn't all it does. It also confronts the chaos of being itself and generates habitable order. That's, a, that's the metaphysical proposition. And that that's best conceptualized as at least one element of God. And so I would think about it as a transcendent reality that's only observable across the longest of time frames, the longest of iterated time frames, to your point. The bandwagon. So if you've ever had a parent ask you if you would jump off a bridge if your friends were all doing it, you basically had a parent that was trying to protect you from this fallacy. So the bandwagon says just because uh, a large group of people are doing something or saying something, it doesn't make it true. So another word for this might be social proof. You know, the more people that believe something, for example, the more credible it appears. You know, if one person believes in some crazy religious idea, you know, it doesn't look very credible. But if 10,000 people all believe in it, all of a sudden people are like, hmm, maybe there's something to that. The red herring. A red herring is when you divert away from the actual issue and use information that sort of looks to be relevant, but in the end, it's not really relevant. It's sort of like word salad, and you see politicians especially doing this a lot. They could be asked a direct question in a debate, and yet they find ways to kind of talk around the issue, maybe bring up other things, but never really address the actual point. So that is a red herring. What percentage of the government's debt is now owned by the Bank of Canada? What percentage? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, as the member opposite knows, our government is operating very much within the fifth... The question is what percentage of our debt is owed to the Bank of Canada? The Honourable Minister. As I said, Mr. Speaker, Canada has the fiscal firepower to do what it needs to do. We have the lowest debt to GDP ratio. How much has the bank printed this year to fund borrowing to the government? The Honourable Minister. As I said, Mr. Speaker, I really want to make clear tonight that an independent Bank of Canada is key to... Question. How much has the government of Canada borrowed from the Bank of Canada this year? Honourable Minister. 
Mr. Speaker, it represents a profound misunderstanding of how the Canadian economy or any Personal incredulity. This fallacy says that because something is hard to understand or it's complicated, that it's probably not true. I often see this presented in debates about evolution. So you have somebody that believes in evolution and maybe somebody that doesn't. And the person that doesn't believe in evolution will often use this fallacy to kind of say, well, evolution is probably not true because that just makes no sense. It's, it's too complicated, right? But that person has never really taken the time to study the science, you know, and a lot of these things, for example, might have really complicated science. So it's almost like in order to truly understand it, you'd have to do a degree in biology or even further chemistry, biochemistry, and truly dive into these topics before you could even say whether something was valid. But these people choose to do no research and instead, wow, that just sounds so unlikely and complicated. I'm going to choose not to believe that and that is false. By a man. I'll tell you why it's not a scam, in my opinion. Uh -huh. All right? Tide goes in, tide goes out. Never a miscommunication. You can't explain that. You can explain why the tide goes tide in. Tide goes in, yeah. tide goes out. See, the out. water, the tide comes in and it goes out, Mr. Silverman. Uh, maybe it always comes in. on top of Mount Olympus out. who's making the tides go in and no, out. No, no, the false cause fallacy. This is one of my favorite fallacies, and you see it a lot in sort of health circles or alternative medicine circles. It basically says that if B occurred after A, that A caused B. So an example of this might be, I started to feel a little bit sick, I had a cold, so I quickly went and drank eight glasses of water you know, every morning until the cold went away. And then you assume that drinking eight glasses of water every single morning gets rid of your cold. Obviously, there's lots of extreme examples of this. People make all kinds of claims all the time. They might eat something or take something and then something happens. And it's sort of this evidence that doesn't really prove something is true. Other things like examples of prayer working often have this. Well, I prayed that my cold would go away and my cold went away, therefore prayer works. Which was my youngest daughter's diagnosed with cystic fibrosis. And so she was struggling a lot with a lot of uh, seasonal threats and different issues that were just making me just feel overwhelmed. And um, I was introduced to an essential oil called Breathe and I just started using it one day, um, putting it on her chest. A few months later, it dawned on me that she was better. The hasty generalization. So this one is the basis of a lot of prejudice, things like racism. And it basically says, if you look at the actions of an individual or a small group, you can then assign that to the larger group. So an example of this might be, let's say your friend had a golden retriever and that golden retriever was aggressive. If you use the hasty generalization fallacy, you would say all golden retrievers must be aggressive, which obviously is not true because golden retrievers are nice. So the last one I'm going to talk about is the fallacy fallacy. And I thought it was appropriate because it basically says just because somebody used a logical fallacy in their argument does not necessarily mean that their argument is false. So let's say somebody used the false cause fallacy and said, I drank some orange juice and then my cold went away. You can't necessarily say that it's not true because it's still possible that the orange juice got rid of the cold, but you can't definitively say it. So you can't say it's false but you also can't say it's true. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of this. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button and leave me a comment with your favorite fallacy. Even if it's one not on my list, like I said, there's hundreds of them. I think it can be really healthy to learn about these fallacies. For one, to avoid using them in our own lives, but also to identify when other people's arguments are not valid. Thanks for watching and I hope you have a great day. Bye.